Lord. And I'm talking about thank the Lord for thanksgiving. Hey, man, I, I, don't know, I don't know about you, I, I like to eat. Nobody else here like to eat? I like to eat. But you know what? I just, I just love this time of the year. It's, it's a good time for family. It's a good time for church. Good time to be alive. I uh, thank God uh, for just being alive in, in a day such as this. Amen. A lot of people today, they, uh, they just moaning and groaning and complaining. And boy, hey, don't do that. In everything, give what? Thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You want to know what the will of God is? The will of God is be satisfied with what God's doing with you when He's doing it. Contentment with godliness is great gain. He, hey, he told that to a pastor. That's found in First Timothy, one of the pastoral epistles writing to a young preacher. He said, you be content with such things as you have. He said, godliness with contentment is great gain. We live in days where people just, they're not happy anymore. Listen, God wants you to be happy. God wants you to be well adjusted. You say, well, we've got problems. Everybody got problems. Get a life. Get over. Life's tough, all right? Learn to toughen it up. I use that phraseology a lot. Suck it in, man. I mean, just suck that gut in and tighten up. Why? Because you're going to have to learn in life to take a punch. That's why he said over in Ephesians chapter 6, and having done all, he said that you might be able to withstand in the evil day. A word withstand means to take a punch. You live for God, you're going to take a punch. You live in this world and try to live right and make a difference, you're going to take a punch. But then he said, and having done all, when you come to the end of the ropes, you say, what are you going to do? Just stand there. Amen. Now, back. folks, I don't have anything new to preach. God's been so good to us. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Brother Harold's favorite song. 439, count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Boy, I'm going to tell you what, we have been blessed, amen, in more ways than you could ever count in a lifetime. We live in the greatest nation on the face of the earth. Great nation. God bless America. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be born here. Listen, you could have been born in Syria. Have your homeland destroyed. Civil war going on. Fighting over Russia trying to get in there to, to get their foot in because they're paving the way to Israel. By the way, that's the end time. U.S. has withdrawn its presence. So we're now no longer much of a presence in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria. Guess what's below Syria? Anybody know what's below Syria? Israel. Hmm? Paving the way of the end time from the north, from Gog and Magog, down to the south, the, the land of the unwalled cities. See, they were walled cities back two, uh, three, and four thousand years ago. They're not walled anymore. We find a setting up. I thank God that we live in such a time as this. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I preached out of here on the blessed blessing the blesser. Everybody got that right. Out of chapter number one, bless the Lord, O my soul. All right? My soul and all that is within me, blessing God for the blessings that God has blessed us with. We need the blessed to bless the blesser. That's how, hey, that's what this is all about. Thanksgiving is giving thanks to God, not just for what you've got, but for future. Trusting God. I, I don't know. Listen, we may lose a lot of our freedoms uh, this next year. If we do, it, I, I'm just going to tell you again, don't sit around and cry about it. You say, well, was, uh, they stole the election. Don't sit around and cry about it. You just pray for the president, pray for the vice president, pray for those in authority over us, and you live for God and understand that God's going to control 2021 just like He controlled 2016 all the way up. All right, God's still going to be God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. 
Verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Thank God. Hey, I've got a job this morning that's got benefits. Got benefits with it. Thank the Lord for that. Hey, God's, God's program is right. Hey, you live for God and God will take care of you. You live for self. You're on your own. And if you want to live in this world on your own, you're a foolish individual. I'm going to tell you that now. God blesses those that bless Him. Now, I want to look at this morning. Hey, we're blessed to live in this great nation. I can say in a right way this morning, I have need of nothing. I really don't. I've, I've got more than I need. Boy, the other night, uh, we sat out on the back deck. We do that quite a bit at evening till about dark. We make hot chocolate. I like that, amen. Got hot chocolate. You can always tell the difference between mine and Barbara's. Hers doesn't have any marshmallows. Now, she's not again it. I get this marshmallow cream. You know, them great big... I take these... T- and I stick it in there and dig deep and get as much piled up on top of... Oh, some of you grinning. You know what I'm talking about. Eh? I get all you can get, and if there's not enough, I double dip. And then I put it down in the bottom. we got these big Christmas cups that are made just for the job, and then we make that hot chocolate and pour it in, and then I take this uh, milk chocolate, creamy milk chocolate uh, that you put in your coffee. I put another tablespoonful in on top of that, and then we've got... Nestle's, hey, you know, got the other chocolate. Hey, I like chocolate. And we sat out there by fire, and boy, I just drank that hot chocolate in the evenings. God's, listen, God's given us a lot of benefits. I don't know what's coming down the pipe. You don't know, but I'm, I'm going to quote old Jim Rutland on this. He always said, all this in heaven too. We've got it made, amen. All this in heaven do this morning. What I want to do, listen, you know the Bible said it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. So what I want us to do this week, not just this morning or tonight, but Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, right only? Wednesday, right? You're going to do what? Ah, so you're going to have a baby, all right? We're going to have another baby, amen. Timothy, Jeremiah, T.J., so now we got SD and now we got TJ coming. Hey man, I don't know where PJ is, but they'll put the PJs on SD and TJ and put them to bed. But we're going to have a good time this week. Hey, I want you to just thank God. Thursday, it's a good day. Fine day. It's supposed to rain. Oh boy, I saw, I saw jaws are dropping. It's going to rain on my parade. That's all right. Hey man, just do like us. Just have it again on Friday. Most of you are going to eat leftovers anyway, right? This psalm's a good reminder of something. God's been good to us, and especially, and let me just stop and say this this morning, if you're saved, you've got the whole package. S-A-V-E-D. Know Jesus Christ personally this morning in a world that's gone nuts. So, you know, they look around here, they see evolution, they see accidents, they see randomness, they see explosions that create things. You know, hot, boy, it takes a whole lot more faith to believe uh, evolution than it does creation. They, man, I, all I see is just, Ben, God did this thing and He did it right. I'm going to start dealing with tonight in the book of Revelation. You see, we've been introducing Antichrist and the first five seals, the fifth seals of souls under the altar, but seal number six, we're going to find out tonight, God's got something to say about this. <laughs> Antichrist is not going to have his way. Oh, oh boy, God's got it all set up. But I want to go over this psalm in verse number three and verse number twelve. We find something God does every day. Look at verse three, who forgiveth all thine iniquity. Now, we're sinners. Saved sinners. That's all we are. Thank God we're not what we used to be, but we're still not what we one day will be. One day we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. First John chapter 3 and verse number 2. 
We'll see him as he is. We'll be just like him in that day. Thank God that day, Jude 24, will be faultless before the throne of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God. Boy, what a day that's going to be. But until that day, we still fail God every day. Now, I want you to notice what God does in that verse. Who forgives present continuing sins. Do you see the E-T-H? They don't. Boy, the beauty of your language in your Bible. Archaic, my foot. It is frozen in time. It's Elizabethan English. At the height of the purity of our language, God gave us the Word of God, and it still echoes that beauty of that language. Forgive it. That means He forgave you back here. He's forgiven you today. He's going to continue to forgive you down the road. There's not going to be a time when the forgiveness of God is not going to be available. Now, I'm not saying just go out and sin. But I'm saying thank God when we are not faithful, He remains faithful. He cannot deny Himself. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful. But not only faithful, He's just. Why? Because sin had to be paid for and Christ is already paid for. So the justice of God brings about the forgiveness of God. He's already paid for. Thank God. Look in verse number 12. As far as the east is from the west. People say, how do you know the Bible is the word of God? Because they knew you could find the north and the south. They think Bible people were ignorant. God said you can't find the east or the west, friend, but you can find the north and the south. We've got a north pole We've got a south pole, and magnetic north is not at the north pole. God set this thing up right. Amen. It's, it is made absolutely right. As far as the east is from the west, he's talking about it doesn't matter how far you go, you're never going to get to the end. You're never going to go, uh, you can go east and here and eventually you're going to hit the Atlantic Ocean, but you can go across the Atlantic and you're going to hit Europe. Matter of fact, you're going to hit North Africa. When I was in Germany, I found out how far north Germany was. Friend, it's, it's about straight across from Nova Scotia. I'm talking about it's cold over there, really cold. All right. God's forgiveness. Thank God when we fail God. God's still there. God's paid for it. God takes it away. God, as far as the east from the west, He said, so far transgressions from us. What's He saying? He's saying you can't find them. If you don't have anything else to thank God about this year, you thank God He's a forgiving God. He hath not rewarded us after our iniquities. Then we find the blessing of good health in verse number 3. The Bible said, Who healeth all our diseases. Anybody had COVID-19 this year? Ain't that a blessing? Hey man, I, isn't that a blessing? Thank God you had COVID-19. Oh, that's a, it's a bubonic plague. No, it's not. It's a flu. Amen. It's nothing but a viral infection. That's the same thing the flu is in the same family. Aren't you glad you got over it? We didn't lose anybody to it. Everybody's done all right with it. Everybody's sitting here. Everybody, Barbara and I probably had it. As a matter of fact, with, with the way things go me, I probably had it five times already. You may, you may have immunity to it. Probably not me. I, hey, we, I thank God for it. You know, I thank God for my health today. I went back to my doctor. I'm 72 uh, years old. And she told me, she said, we ain't changing nothing. She said, you are so stable. I'd already knew. Hey, three days after they do the blood, I can look it up on my, my health chart on the VA. I'm going to tell you what, it was absolutely dead center, perfect all the way down the line. Hey, hey, I thank God for that. Listen, I thank God for good health. But I'm glad when you get sick, God gave you a body that will heal itself. Your body would take care of itself. 
You know, I don't believe we need anywhere near the medications that they put on us. I believe the more you get, the more your body recovers itself, the stronger your immune system is at that point in time. I think we hurt our immune system. You know, they used to misuse penicillin all the time. They gave you penicillin for anything walking, and all of a sudden they started getting bacteria that was uh, uh, not reacting to penicillin, all right? God, God healed. Listen, God healed. Had a doctor doing surgery on me one day and he came down and he said, Pastor, can I pray for you? He had his mask on. They already had me draped out. They were doing a nerve block on my leg and doing surgery. And I told him, I said, anybody can pray for me right now. You know, I'm laying here. You're getting ready to cut, cut on me. And he came down and he prayed. But he told me before he prayed, he said, Pastor, I want you to understand, I'm going to do the best I can. But if you get healed, it's going to be God that does it. How you like a surgeon like that? He got enough sense to know that it's God. They give you medicines. They've got hey, they've got wisdom out here in a lot of areas, friend. But if God don't want you to get over it, you won't get over it. If God wants you to get over it, you'll get over it. I've often said, if God wants you to die, every doctor in South Carolina can't save you. If God wants you to live, they can't kill you either. Did you know more people in hospitals, over 200,000 a year average dying because they're treating them or in the wrong way or they're treating the wrong patient? You know it's more dangerous to go to the hospital than it is to have COVID-19? <laughs> Thank God God gives us an immune system. He gives us white blood cells that fight, red blood cells that feed, and white fight, all right? Two types, that plasma that God put in. God takes something that is poison to your system. Did you know rust is a poison to your system? And yet God takes oxygen and God takes the iron that's in your blood and oxidizes that iron and that's the way it carries that fierce oxide. It's a form of fierce oxide through your body and hey, it, it puts that oxygen and that food where it belongs and then it comes back in the form of uh, uh, carbon dioxide and, and you exhale that and the oxygen back in it. Listen, I'm just saying this. God has fearfully and wonderfully made you. You say, well, how did God do it? God knew what you needed. And then I think, verse number 4, one, one of the greatest who redeemeth thy life from destruction. You know, I look back on my life, every one of us, I think, has got a self-destruct button. We live in days where people are destroying their lives. They know they're doing that. You know, they don't, go back to the masking situation, they don't want you to infect somebody else. Uh, but, it, but, but at the same time, listen, folks, people are going to get sick, people are going to get all this. Do you know what? We normally destroy ourselves. Did you know they're going to try and make it against the law not to wear a mask? But it's not against the law for people to smoke and kill themselves with cigarettes. Not against the law for them to drink and fry their livers, and it's not against the law for people to overeat and obesity kill them. It's not against the law for people that have sugar diabetes to go down uh, here and get them uh, a milkshake, or thank God, get them a Sunday, or get them a banana split down here someplace and eat all that they want. This God, God redeems something. He He saved my life. God saved my life in 1976. I, I'm not going to tell you I'd be in hell today. I don't know where I'd be. But I don't think I'd been living today. I was one of these, hey, not bragging on it, I was a heavy smoker. Two, two and a half pack cigarettes a day plus working in the mines and sucking that coal dust in. I'm talking about five, six days a week. I kept bronchitis in my late 20s. I kept bronchitis all the time because I was a heavy smoker. You know what God did? God, two, two months after I got saved, God took those out of my pocket. 
God knew I'd never live. God, God redeemed me. God saved me. God saved my life in a lot of ways, not just physically, but spiritually years ago. I cannot tell you how glad I am to be in this pulpit this morning. He saved my life and He saved Barbara's life. God been good. Oh, let me tell you something. God, God changes your life. Aren't you glad that God doesn't leave you where He finds you? We, got, we live in days where people say they get saved, but they never change. They still live just like they did back here. They, there's that not been a change in them. Now, I'm not saying they're not saved, but I'm saying they're not bearing any fruit either. But I'll tell you what, when, hey, you, when you come to God, you'll never go back the same way you came. God will make a difference in your life. He'll change your life. Will He change your life, Clifford? Oh, let me tell you something. He was a bad boy. Hey, man, I know all about him and Mr. Putman over here. He's kin to some of these folks. So I'll kind of leave him alone. Hey, man. Let me tell you something. I thank God for that change. I was sitting in the barber shop down here one time over here. And I forgot what the man name had a little barber shop over here in Watts Mill in that area over there. But I was sitting in there, and everybody in there was talking about JD. How bad J.D. How bad J.D. Hey, J.D. Putman was bad. A lot of people don't know how bad that man was before he got saved. He was a Jew. And they were sitting around and I was listening to him. And all of a sudden I saw a guy walking in through the front door and it's J.D. They got quiet. They're talking about it. Every one of them talking about J.D. I said, hey J.D. I said, brother, are you still saved? <laughs> and we started talking about God and every one of them sitting over with their mouth shut. You know, oh, hey, I'm talking about God redeems your life from destruction. God does that, amen. And then notice what He said, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. God, God protects us. God's good to us. God surrounds us with good things. Hey, hey, it's still good to be a Christian. I'm Christian Lord than anything I know. Thank God. Hey, I thank God. In this world, oh, hey, you need to learn to bear fruit where you planted. Sometimes God plants you in some unusual places. We're studying that with Moses over in the book of Exodus. He thought he's just going to not be the son of Pharaoh's daughter and he's just going to move across the street and become a good Egyptian, but they didn't want him either. Now he's without a country, amen. Thank God. Hey, God's getting ready to bless him. We find the blessing of loving kindness. God is good to us who crowneth, look at that word, crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. I cannot tell you how much God loves you because I don't understand. It is without comprehension. We love our kids. Love these little old youngins. Boy, don't we love these kids. It's really interesting on Wednesday night. All these kids got together again for the first time in a while, and this place in here was a circus. Now, I'm advising you parents, we're not going to do the running thing again, I, but I'm just letting them go. They, they were having a ball. You say, why don't you want, never, want them to run? Because they knocked Brother Harold down. Amen. We don't want no, hey, but it's, I was sitting there watching. I wasn't doing a thing. I wasn't saying a thing. I was just watching them while they were having an absolute ball in here. They had two of them fighting over here. One a yarn and one a yarn. Them two boys were down in there. Y'all didn't even know it. They were down that aisle. They were tied up, looked like Dagwood and his, what, were, what was Dagwood's neighbor's name? Uh, but I mean, all I saw was feet and hands and they were all at, all, hey, they were having a ball. Listen, God loves you more than we love your kids. Hey, I love your kids. These are my kids. I want you to understand that. These are my great-grandchildren. A lot of you are my grandchildren. 
One of the blessings of staying in the same place for 33 years is I have pastored the parents, I've pastored the children, and now have the blessing of seeing the grandchildren brought up and watch these kids. And boy, all of a sudden, we got all kinds of little old kids in here. Thank God for kids. Amen. Hey, oh, I'm still one. Amen. But we, we find in here that He is loving kindness. Look at verse 5. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things? Satisfaction. What's hey, with good things, not bad things. Thank the Lord. You know, somebody gave us a box of chocolate brownie mix. That's a good thing, right? Barbara said, now because of all the calories, we ain't gonna put any icing on it. She better watch mine. Hey, what's a brownie without icing on it? We're going hey. Satisfies our mouth with good things. That's smart. Listen, are you satisfied? One of the greatest things in the world is satisfaction, is contentment. Boy, just go out and it's all right. Everything's all right. Your house is all right. Your car is all right. Your job's all right. Right? Huh? Thank God you got a job. And if you ain't got a job, it's because you ain't looking. They're blazing town higher and they can't, they can't get anybody. Why? Because they're all milking the system. We're going to stay on unemployment as long as we can ride that thing out. If I couldn't pastor this church, tomorrow morning I would be out job hunting and I would have a job before the day was over even if it paid $7 an hour. I learned a long time ago, first thing you need to do when you're out of work is generate income. Generate it. Then you stay there until you advance to something else. You've got to generate income. You've got to get on that thing and you've got to go. Now, if you're laid off and can't get a job, that's fine. And if you're laid off making more than $7 an hour, then I I just think you're doing pretty good for a while. Amen. But I want to tell you what, it's not an end to be achieved. We live in a land where welfare is an end to be achieved. A lot of people want to get on welfare and ride the system for life. You know why? They don't have to worry about a 401k. Hmm? Their 401k is they're going to be riding the system when they're 90 years old. So they're going to be good to go in that area. But boy, hey, satisfies your mouth. Then we find divine intervention in verse number 6. He executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. I want, to, I want to help you families that are in a little problem right now. It will eventually be gone. And when it's over, it will be alright. A lot of things in this life need to be straightened out. Don't get straightened out. But I want to tell you what, one day it will get straightened out. God's going to straighten it out. God's going to take care of us. You know, He said that we're not to seek vengeance. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay thee, thus saith the Lord. God told us to have a forgiving and a loving heart, and that's what we do in our life. We have a forgiving and a loving hearts. But I thank God for divine intervention. I thank God for His mercy, His wisdom. I thank God this morning for His sovereignty. I'm glad God still owns this place. <laughs> uh, you know, they're trying to throw God out of His world. Oh, good luck with that. And I don't even believe in luck. I believe in the, I believe providence. I, I don't believe there's good luck or bad luck. I know there's chance, but that's not luck. It just sometimes bad things happen to good people. Sometimes good things happen to bad people. But let me help you with something. Neither one of them stay that way. God will bless the good people and God will curse the bad people and that's just the way this thing works out here. But I thank God this morning and this next year that our God will still be God. It's, everything is by Him, through Him, and to Him. You know, what that, you know what that means? It means everything is God's. Give your life to God. Give your love to God. Well, one of the amazing things uh, Dr. Caneb loved, she loved my wife. 
She said, I miss her because, boy, Barbara's always sitting right there with me. And I go in there, I told her, I said, she's scared to death that you're going to tell me i got stage 4 cancer and I'll come up and I'll say, nothing, just a little cough, it'll go away. Barbara, Barbara wants to make sure she gets it right. huh? You, you women know what I'm talking about? They remember, oh, that ain't nothing. <laughs> I can handle that. Hey, Amen. She comes in there, she listens. But she knows something. She knows how much I love Barbara Lynn. We did a lot of talking about Barbara Lynn. Thank God for that. I thank God for God's justice and righteousness in our lives. Listen, are you satisfied with your life today? What's Thanksgiving? It's Thanksgiving for what we had. It's Thanksgiving for what we've got. But it's Thanksgiving for what's coming down the road. Thanking God. In everything by prayer and supplication, that's asking with thanksgiving. You're asking with thanksgiving before you ever receive it. Let your requests be made known unto God. We'll quote that on Wednesday night. Boy, I thank God that God's been good to us. This week, you reflect on that between now and the first of the year. Boy, we got Christmas coming. We, hey, I hope, I hope it snows. I'd love to have a white Christmas in South Carolina. Not not a big snow. 18, 24 inches be all right. Amen. So me and Miss Barbara can get on that four-wheeler. Amen. You say she ride a four-wheeler, she gets on that four-wheeler with me. Amen. We get on that thing, go through the woods. I run under, I hit all these branches, got all that heavy snow because I duck and let her take it right. I hide it until we get there and I duck and she takes it right in the face. God's been good to us. God's been good to you. Don't you complain today. Don't you complain this week. God's been good to you. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to have an invitation. We're going to go back here and eat. We could spend all day long in Psalms 103, but I just want to reflect. Listen, God 